Welcome to another installment of Dylan's Villains. As you may have heard, Loki Season 2 will debut on Disney Plus October 6th, and I decided to base this video on one of the characters we will see in the show. If you were paying attention during the first trailer put out for Season 2, you may have caught a glimpse of a theater in what looks to be the 60s or 70s. The sign above the entrance advertises the in-universe movie Zaniac. We see Loki and Girl Not Loki as their shadows loom over the figure of Brad Wolf, aka Zaniac. In the comics, the character of Zaniac was introduced in Thor 319 in 1982. Brad Wolf is a young actor hungry to make a name for himself in the industry. Unfortunately for now, he's stuck acting as the titular villain in a B-horror movie. While filming a scene wherein he is pursuing a college girl across a football field, the actors go off script by running to the bleachers that has people standing nearby watching the production. Two of the people are Donald Blake, the human alter ego of Thor, and Shauna Lind. Earlier in the story, a box of explosives meant for a car crash scene is brought to the set. The director scolds the guy who brought them and tells him to store them under the bleachers. I'm sure you see where this is going, but don't get ahead of me, it gets wild. A random man walking by bemoans the sad state of movies, sounding every bit like a person complaining on the platform formerly known as Twitter. But the guy must be bullseye in disguise, because as he walks past the bleachers, he flicks his used, still lit cigar back, and it somehow flies through the fence into the open box of explosives. The results are predictable. What isn't predictable is that the football field was built directly over the lab that was used for the Manhattan Project. In the aftermath, Brad Zane Zaniac makeup has become a permanent part of him, but when he discovers the knife he had is gone, he shows the ability to create a new one out of radioactive energy. He tries to go after Shauna, but is interrupted by a group of men, and because Zaniac is super straight, his knife only pops out for women. So he beats the guys off, I mean up, with his bare hands. He picks up Shauna and walks off as Donald finally comes to and sees her being carried away. Changing into Thor, he manages to save Shauna in the nick of time before Zaniac confuses him for one of the pretty pretties because he has long blonde hair it was the 80s he gets cropped by thor then he spooms him into a wall and runs away you will always remember this as the day that you almost caught captain jack Spanner. realizing zaniac is acting out the movie for real thor asks the director what is supposed to happen next which is apparently for zaniac to kill everyone living in a home for women thor gets there just in time and they begin another fight scene where we see him get whumped and racked before giving zaniac a good throck and swamp zaniac tries throwing his energy knives at the girls but thor deflects and ends up using train tracks to ricochet the knife back at zaniac putting him down for the count in the epilogue dr blake confirms zaniac is still alive but he wouldn't be seen again for about four years. In 1986 is Thor number 371, Brad, who now looks completely different, is broken out of prison by Thug Thatcher to get revenge against Thor by killing Jane Foster. Brad is excited by the prospect, but he cocks it up when Thatcher's ex-girlfriend Ruby walks in on their meeting. He throws one of his energy knives at her before Thatcher's right-hand man Kellen shoots him dead. Normally that would be the end of the story for Zaniac, but things get weirder when Brad's lifeless body starts to convulse, then bursts open with a bunch of vermin spraying out. One of the creatures catches Thug and bites him before burrowing into his body as he loses consciousness. Springing back up with an enhanced physique, the Zaniac has returned. In Thor 372, Thor and the character Justice Peace, first introduced in Thor 371, show up at the house containing the bodies of Ruby and Brad. They have a brief scuffle which includes Justice Peace trying to shoot Thor with another butt plug rocket, due to each thinking the other is guilty of the murders. After they come to a truce, Justice Peace gives Thor Zaniac's new backstory. In the alternate future he's from, Zaniac set off World War VII by possessing a diplomat from the Tashkent Prefecture and murdering the mayor of Brooklynopolis. Although the future Zaniac was killed, they learn that the vermin that burst out of the host carry the actual power of Zaniac, and once one of the swarm infects a host, the rest of the creatures dissipate. There's even mention of Jack the Ripper having been an older incarnation of Zaniac, and that is where the character's history gets interesting, because this one panel ended up tying Zaniac to a whole bunch of other unrelated characters and stories. If you were to look up the character right now, you would see a lot of articles mentioning how he was sent from the Dark Dimension by the Doctor Strange villain Dormammu. This connection was made in the official handbook of the Marvel Universe Horror Edition from 2005. The section dealing with Jack the Ripper gives us the information regarding Dormammu having sent the magical creature to possess the hunchbacked Tom Malvern, which was shown in an offhand way in 1990's Doctor Strange Sorcerer Supreme number 23. Dormammu entered the Earth plane, causing a fire in London in 1666. Earth's new and first Sorcerer Supreme, the Ancient One, defeated him at Stonehenge, sending him back to the Dark Dimension. Due to the Ancient One's barriers of protection on 
around the world, Dormammu could only act through earthly agents, one of whom was Tom Malvern slash Jack the Ripper, although he's just referred to as Jack the Ripper here. After a lot more possessions throughout time, eventually the entry notes how Brad Wolf was bonded to the Ripper creature due to being transformed by radiation, because being turned into a murderer by just radiation would be silly. But getting back to this story, the Time Variance Authority, appearing for the first time in this issue, worked to send Justice Peace back to this time period when Zaniac took on his name to hopefully stop him for good and fix the future. Thor calls back to Zaniac's first appearance before realizing he recognizes Ruby as Thug's ex-girlfriend and surmises that he must be going after Jane Foster now that he has been possessed by Zaniac. Before they can leave, Thor and Justice Peace run into Ruby's kids who ask Thor if he's dating their mom, but he tells them he's a family friend before tucking them in and using Mjolnir's magic to put them to sleep. He says he is giving them the gift of peaceful sleep until the next morning, when they will wake up and find the dead body of their mother and the husk of Brad Wolf. Magical. Flying to the house Jane Foster now shares with her husband, Thor sees they are too late and Zaniac has already gotten to Jane. He flies into a rage and things look bleak. Justice Peace tells Thor he will be pulled back to the future soon when his hop cycle, hop sickle, hop cycle, who cares, runs out of temporal charge. Thor sees this as an opportunity and remembers that Mjolnir used to be able to move through time, although that was a long time ago. He manages to summon enough temporal energy to recharge the bike, but as it runs out of its initial charge, the two are pulled back in time a few hours. They return to the house where Thatcher became Zaniac and see him and Kellen running for their lives. They manage to destroy the creatures and discover that, in the chaos, Thatcher died from fright. Being the hero he is, Thor carries his body to a park bench, where he covers him with a newspaper in the pouring rain, saying that when he's found the next day, people will just assume he was a derelict who failed to survive the night. He really seems to love leaving dead bodies for other people to deal with, doesn't he? And after saying goodbye to Justice Peace, Thor takes Ruby's sons to Asgard, where the Asgardians agree to take them in and raise them. And that was the last we saw of Zaniac, although he did get a mention in 1996's Thor the Legend as one of the lamest foes of Thor. Interestingly, this entry doesn't mention anything about the vermin or exploding corpses, instead giving us a synopsis for the character based on his first appearance in Thor 319. And as far as the comics go, that's about all we have for Zaniac. Exactly how much the character will resemble his comics character counterpart remains to be seen, but I think it's fairly safe to assume it will be another one of those signature MCU style adaptations with which we are all so familiar. Having gone over all of that, I would like to know your thoughts on Zaniac. Do you think he's a character that has more potential? I think so, because I like that crazy knife throwing version of him. I think that has the potential to be expanded into him being able to generate other energy weapons, but that's just an idea I had off the top of my head, you know, doing this research into the character, but those are my thoughts. I would like to know your thoughts, so feel free to let me know what you think about it in the comments. If you liked the video, make sure that you like the video and feel free to subscribe if you're not already. Now, if you're done here, I would appreciate it if you would go and read a book. But if not, well then I'll see you on my next video.